Former Ambassador of Ukraine to Britain, ex-Minister of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, Vadim Pristaiko believes that Britain is one of the countries that will not leave Ukraine in its fight against Russian invasion. He admitted that the country may agree to deploy its troops in the demilitarized zone between Russia and Ukraine if a decision is made to create such a zone. The diplomat said, said this on Obos Revitel media outlet. This is how he commented on information from the Western media that US President-elect Donald Trump's plan to end the war may involve placing European and British troops in Ukraine in a buffer zone between the armies of both sides. However, as Pristaiko emphasized, Ukraine should adopt a law on the admissions of allied armed formations to the territory of Ukraine. I want to remind you that our allies differ from Russia in that we have to invite them to our territory. A law is passed for this purpose. It must be passed at least in order to create legal grounds. For example, if the president of France said that he is ready to do this, then let's invite immediately. We heard from the British Prime Minister that they are ready to do this. For example, to send their instructors and we will immediately make a decision. The Verkhovna Rada will vote and invite our friends, our brothers, our allies. This is a normal way, the diplomat said. He is convinced that the partners will support any decision of Ukraine, both if the country wants to continue fighting and if it wants to look for ways to negotiate. If we want to fight and are ready to fight, our friends will help us to fight. If we want and are ready to look for ways of reconciliation, find compromises, we will be helped to look for this way. This is only our decision. We have suffered so much during all this time and that no one has a right except us to accept the decision, added Pristaiko. We will remind that the Telegraph, citing sources close to Trump, writes that the newly elected US president may propose to create a 1,200 kilometer buffer zone, which will be provided by European and British troops to separate the Russian and Ukrainian armies within the framework of the plan to stop the war. Mexico is facing a second Donald Trump presidency, and few countries can match its experience as a target of Trump's rhetoric. There have been threats to close the border, impose tariffs and even send U.S. forces to fight Mexican drug cartels if the country doesn't do more to stem the flow of migrants and drugs. That's not to mention what mass deportations of migrants who are in the U.S. illegally could do to remittances, the money sent home by migrants that have become one of Mexico's main sources of income. But as much as this second round looks like the first round, when Mexico pacified Trump by quietly ceding to his immigration demands, circumstances have changed, and not necessarily for the better. Today, Mexico has in Claudia Scheinbaum a somewhat stern leftist ideologue as president, and Trump is not known for handling such relations well. Back in 2019, Mexico's then-president Andres Manuel López Obrador was a charismatic, plain-spoken, folksy leader who seemed to understand Trump, because both had a transactional view of politics, you give me what I want, I'll give you what you want. The two went on to form a chummy relationship. But while López Obrador was forged in the give-and-take politics of the often corrupt former ruling party, the Institutional Revolutionary Party, or PRI, Scheinbaum grew up in a family of leftist activists and got her political experience in radical university student movements. Scheinbaum made a point of being one of the first world leaders to call Trump on Thursday to congratulate him after the election, but during the call Trump did two things that may say a lot about how things will go. First, Scheinbaum said, Trump quickly brought up the border to remind her there were issues there. Then he asked Scheinbaum to send his greetings to López Obrador, with whom Trump said he had a very good relationship. That might suggest that Trump believes that López Obrador, the new president's political mentor, is still in charge, a view shared by some analysts. Not everything has changed for the worse, cross-border trade has topped $800 billion per year and U.S. companies are more dependent than ever on Mexican plants. But the U.S. Mexico-Canada Trade Agreement, or USMCA, is coming up for review, and Mexico has made legal changes that Trump could seize on to demand a renegotiation of parts of the deal. Scheinbaum has suggested Mexico won't give in even if backed into a corner. But standing up hasn't worked particularly well before.
you see it? The criminal invasion. Horrible, some horrible, deathly people. Mexico has been the victim of Donald Trump's harshest criticism since his first term in office when he accused Mexicans of bringing drugs and crime across the border. This time around in Trump's second term, China is likely to take some of the heat. But the focus remains firmly on Mexico because of two key issues, stemming the flow of migrants across the border and bringing jobs back to the United States. In Trump's first term, Mexico had a charismatic, folksy president who was knew the art of the deal. He was able to negotiate an agreement where Mexico would agree to accept migrants deported back across the border, even if they weren't Mexicans. And the United States turned a blind eye towards Mexico's faulty compliance in the war on drugs. 